You ready? There is a connection between the paranormal, UFOs, and the myths of ancient history. The clues are scattered across the landscape from a forbidden past, maybe even in your own backyard. There is a connection between the true nature of our reality, consciousness, and the unexplained. I'm Carl the Crusher. Let's explore the unknown. This place you're saying is actually bought at the same time as Skinwalker Ranch, is that right? Yes. I had no idea that this place even existed. On our field survey at, at Bigelow's Mountain Wilson Ranch, Nevada, with Hal put off. There they are, right there. There's the building. Right there. Dude, nobody knows about this place. What the heck? What the heck? It was on purpose. It's on purpose. There's a time and a place for everything. And now's the time. And now's the time. Yeah. And, and you haven't even started playing games out there, though. That's even No, I haven't better. started doing any experiments. I haven't researched. We haven't even left the uh, buildings or anything to go explore the ancient petroglyphs and look for artifacts or any of that. But you're saying I need to just go through this book and it has a ton of the story and how this ranch was involved in all of that. Huh? Yeah, you'll get a better understanding where and how they develop NIDs. Yeah, and all of it actually was was here, not necessarily all in Utah like they say so, right? Yeah, close to close to headquarters in Las Vegas. Yeah, that's true. Oh, ah, uh, yeah, we are. I just mentioned that on the drive up here. That we're right by Area Fifty One, which, dude, it just gets weirder and weirder, man. So this is the northern edge, basically from here, east and west. Any further south, you're on the test site. Right. On top of this mountain is apparently a Vortac aviation tower that keeps all FAA north of this spot. Right. Everything else south is other activity in the sky. Oh, that's Herb Castle, Major Gold, as I call him. He taught us everything about gold mining. Uh, there, is there, there's ancient gold mines and modern ones and everything all over uh, here yeah, too? He's the gentleman that had me go out and check that white marker out on the mountain to see if it was a Spanish marker or not. Okay, yeah, you the, were mentioning that too, because everywhere I go, there's like this narrative of the same thing. You're close to modern uh, military facilities, Department of Energy sites, and, and government research funding, which is exactly what went on here. We're right by... Uh, the Nevada test site, Area 51, and all the areas. And then you got Skinwalker Ranch and all that. And the MX missile program was getting ready to take off from this base, basically here. And right on top of ancient petroglyphs and oral traditions that have to do with the paranormal portals and energetic zones and weirdness, all kinds of high strangeness, ancient mines and all that stuff. So it's all the same. Spanish, the Spaniards coming in and like, Ah, it's like the same story on repeat spread out over a broader spectrum than people realize, right? Right? I don't know. <laughs> um, this, is, this, is, this is newer land. I mean, right. uh, I, I went to school and I was taught one thing and uh, my world is now twisted. Yeah, yeah, it is, right? You know, and, and again, the twisted world is absolutely more towards where I would, the real world. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So wait, you found this here on the on the ranch? Out in the properties around here. Really? And this is authentic? Oh my word. <laughs> what is this guy? He's like Start talking, man. I'm asking questions about how you found this sword and what it is. Well, if you look at it and you see those bumps in it. That's where my quad tires went over. You it. drove over top of it? So I drove over it and we looked down to see what it was. Myself and Nick Knack were on the quad. And this was sitting there. So it winds up being Wait. an Knights of the Pythias Templar sword. This is a Templar sword and you found it on this property here? Around here. Around here. Okay. Yes. Are you, okay. I don't, I'm not going to probe anymore as to well, where. Just, yeah, just around <laughs> here. But yes, and we've never unsheathed it. We don't know who's signed on it. We don't know anything really about it other than it's just sitting on the ground out here. OK. 
Can we unsheath it? Oh, I would love to. Can we? That would be, yeah, let's do it. Let's, let's unsheath it, dude. Imagine, no. imagine if it's signed by the right guy. No kidding, let's unsheath it. You guys want to all unsheath it? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. I was always afraid I'm going to break that wood handle with the little cross on. Now you fold out from here. Yeah, but look, even even the whole thing is kind of like... Yeah, it's pretty old. Trying to get you my see camera my bends to focus in it? properly. Yes, here you go. Are you... Maybe Let's no set it on the table. No yes. Dude, I don't, I'm so scared to even yeah, touch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, help me. <laughs> Where are we? Let's set it over here on this table really quick. Oh my gosh, here. I got to set it down. I got my camera. <laughs> this is crazy, man. I have somebody beat it for you and bag it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So the research I've done on it so far, it sounds like it could be 1910. 1915 in that range and it was like a ceremonial style sword and they were all signed by somebody so on that blade there should be some a signature and hopefully it's from like somebody like that we can identify and then we would know who came through exactly yep who was out in this spot in the middle of nevada <laughs> sure. i can't believe this man So there could be a name of a of a Templar or <laughs> Oh my gosh. They were here as part of my song. Yes. Okay, so you're gonna open it? You wanna try to unsheath it? Go for it. Let's no, see. I'm not gonna Let's touch start. it. You're no, the one I, that found it. Hey, I found this. I gotta film it six, seven years ago. And I just lay it right over here. Careful, but do it right do here. Do it right here, here and lay it. It doesn't come out though. You can't Probably not gonna come out easy because of that band. That's what. I, that's band. where I was at. And I it wouldn't just... even try to dig it out. You don't think so? No, that's why I was let an expert take it out. Yeah, uh, Carl's an expert. No, not on this. <laughs> you could take away the value. Of that. I know. Yeah, I don't. Wanna, I know. That's I really, why I haven't touched it. It does it's, have it's, a. You're right. It does have a bend in the blade. Yeah, that's that was the two quad tire marks. So that's a. Let's, you know, the let's wait. Sticks. Let's wait. Oh yeah, let's not unsheath it. You know that guy that uh, Pawn Store uses? He's got that black brim hat. He yep. always wears a red shirt when he goes over and the values and but he things. Won't, he won't do that. He does He does old buying stuff. Okay. They'll bring in an expert that does this stuff. Yeah. They might know You'll somebody. Let me call a buddy of mine. He hey, I'm that. not, you know, again, it's now that we're going to bust loose into the world, let's bust this baby open and see what the hell it does too. Same yeah. thing. There's initials on it right there. Look at that. FCB. FCB. And there's Corey. a there's like a guy. Oh, and he's it's like he's oh, it's like Samson and he's knocking the pillars of yeah. Olympus down or something. No, See I'm that? Still he's like a guy who's knocking the pillars over. I just haven't found that person uh, or I haven't really looked. It'd be our luck that we would destroy, mess it up. Break it. Something. I don't want to pull the handle or break the wood right. That's what I was afraid of. Right. But I think right here if we Put something in there and just twist it. It would probably be more likely yeah, to start then, working. Then that's you're why. damaging. Right. That's why I didn't want to damage any of it. Right. Mm -hmm. I was afraid, like I said, cracking that wood because that wood's old. They they know how to go about and it. it. A nice there could be a way without even opening it to be able to scan and see if there's a name written oh, through. Oh, there he is. Like no, to X better. X ray through it in such a way that we don't even have to open it and see who made the sword or who owned it. That is an amazing find. Wow. We're taking a second look at this sword and we're wondering if it's not like a Masonic rites sword or ritual sword for early settlers because of the style of these screws. And you're saying that does match for it being like vintage Knights of Pythias FCB sword and scabbard fraternal ceremonial sword. And that's the same Apollo pulling down the pillars right there just different handle and it says fcb and then just different ornamental handle on there but it's a it's a knight's templar whether it's authentic or it's a reenactment for like masonic ceremonies or something that's the big question yeah, that, but on the top here yeah you have the the same they had the battle axe thing there it is right there broken off of the top it looks like something maybe. it looks like uh you have the same flathead screw there, though, as here. Is that authentic? This is the same. It has the 
the battle axe. That was the, uh, what do they call that? The, what do they call that? I can't remember. The two-sided battle axe sword had to do Let's look at the other side of ancient too. Rome, yeah. I was searching for when I searched. Is it for. Apollo or is that Samson pulling down the pillars? What? Yeah. So, yeah, that's interesting that that was found here too. This is all out of this book here. This is saying that Nids came to study cattle mutilations. Terry Sherman and wife. This is all talking about Skinwalker Ranch and the Shermans. This is talking about uh, Hal Putoff being seized with intense reactions and sneezing and feeling better. You turn the page and then here is Mount Wilson Ranch, Nevada, right where we're at. Piochi. So this ranch was all part of this story and nobody talks about it. Nobody has any idea that this place... So you're saying they actually did the experiments like Close Encounters of the Third Time with kind with a Jacques Vallée with light and sound. They did that uh, right up in up that, an upper meadow. Up in that canyon up there? Yes. Oh my gosh. Okay. This is so crazy. This is all right here in this book. It's even talking about how Hal put off, how they brought how they used Ingo Swan and Yuri Geller, and they were using remote viewing here and at Skinwalker Ranch to try and make contact with extraterrestrials or with another dimension. Yeah, look, look, look. There was a piano and an electric organ and a row of fine tables. There were plates of glass where all set as waiting for rough, ready miners. The ghost of a tall Native American is rumored to show up in one of the rooms. It says right there on page 329. That's the room, you guys, right there. And you're going your to make me sleep in there tonight. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So this is the motel room where the sightings of the shaman occur, where I'm going to be spending the night tonight. So it happens to be your room for tonight. Yeah. Right. That should be fun. Oh, it's actually really nice in here. It doesn't feel like creepy or haunted at all. We've themed it up, of course. Yeah. Ah, it's beautiful, man. This is great. I thought it was going to be like camping up here. Native wood, all locally made. Wow, this is so cool. So they have have experiences where people sleep in this room and then they've seen a tall shaman figure. that. Yeah, people have woke up in the middle of the night. They've had... Uh... Doors opening, closing, the water has turned on, uh, and then just feelings, and then waking up and actually seeing figures. Seeing like a figure standing yeah, in the full room? Full blown, pretty tall, of stature, Indian. Uh, shaman, from what we understand, 750 year ago time period. Really? I'm not privy Based to Based on it. the way he's dressed, or? Yeah, that was it. From the garb that he's wearing, he's. Uh, He's from 750 years ago. It's been time dated, apparently. Wow. Okay, so we're going to be staying in this, in this room tonight and walking around, checking it out. I honestly thought that I was going to be coming up here. Uh, I was going to be more like camping, hiking around, looking for petroglyphs. This is amazing. That There's actually been a record of people coming up here. It's like the test site kind of expanded. They ran into this area for part of their research and found something unusual. And now this whole ranch has been built up here. The same time a Skinwalker Ranch was being investigated, so was this. And now there's all kinds of paranormal encounters that occur right here in this room where I'm gonna be staying tonight. The next morning, my front door is banging madly at 6.30 a.m. <laughs> and it was her. And she's over there telling me, why didn't you tell me? what and she's about this indian that didn't just stay in that room apparently he was in this room too so he went from this one to, and visited that one too uh, yeah. so who knows maybe i mean you're saying there's native american artifacts all over flake sites campgrounds petroglyphs i mean Squanol is right down below Squanol us. right down there Got this bizarre looking insect skin or shell just laying on the ground Hopefully there isn't giant ones of these lurking in cave systems around here, right? Like, wouldn't that be terrifying? Look at that thing. 
but that's just called a potato bug. They're actually harmless. We're getting a tour now of the ranch itself. How many acres is this? I mean, I see there's all kinds of buildings, old. So the entire so property at Mount Wilson Guest Ranch area is 365 acres of private land. Wow. We, I started at 145 and I'm right around 100 acres right now. Wow. Okay, so this is a big research area and you're saying there's Native American artifacts and dwelling sites like all over here. And what did you call this up here? That's, we call that the cathedral. The cathedral, okay. Beautiful views of everything in the Mount Wilson area. Okay. And there we have some Indian, some old caves up in those. That bluff sticking up there, right there. Yep. Up in there? Yep, that's the one, and that whole ridge line. A bunch of like uh, you know, squares down in the ground, all cut out with rocks. Wow. Okay, yeah, we'll have to check all that out. There's a lot to do here, man, from all angles, from stuff in the sky to the shaman to ghost sightings in the saloon, Native American artifacts, a lot to do. This is the old, you said this is the old settler's house? This would be the original settler's house on the property. And um, have they had any kind of experiences in here while staying in here? You just kind of told me one. I'm yeah, trying to fish the story back yes, out of you. The, uh, <laughs> the Craw family, basically, we have been property in Craw Creek. The saloon's named after the Craw Creek right there. This was their house. Um, apparently, one of their last moments here, everything on their kitchen table, they were all sitting at the kitchen table. Everything lifted up off the table, rose up to a point where everybody basically ran out of there as it all fell all over the table. Just like poltergeist lifted up and dropped? Yeah. Yep. Oh, wow. Okay. I've since taken the house apart. You know, it had all modern walls on it, so I've been stripping it down. Wow. And I'm, I want to get it to a, a time period point. So staying in this uh, old settler's house and doing some investigating might be worth the time, too. Oh, I'd say that would probably be fun for you. Wow. Maybe we'll put you up in here tonight instead. <laughs> Take your pick, right? You guys are just like using me for bait all over. Yeah. Hey, buddy, how are you doing? That's a cute That's Odie. Hey, Odie. That's the newest uh, acquisition of the ranch. Other my dog. My dad had a dog named Odie. That's so cool. Hi, Odie. People have had encounters here in the bunkhouse too. Yeah, we've heard of everything. Apparently, we a lot of people waiting for the stagecoach that used to stop down here. Really? Yeah, and they actually still hear people standing waiting for the coach to arrive. So the stagecoach would pull up right up here on this old road. Yep. And they would, and they would come out of here. The road is about like a mile down from here, and this was just a stopping point, a watering point, uh, where they actually rested the horses. All right here. Watered them up. Man, see, there's just levels and levels of history that. Uh, definitely ripen the paranormal activity if there is any. Nice, and these are all cleaned up now too, but this building has been here for a long time then too, huh? Yeah, this is probably 50s. Wow, cool. Apparently they're old army barracks was how this building started up. Really? Yeah, that, that end of the building down the end was a barrack. And again, built right on top of like historical something all kinds of stuff levels and levels of history yeah all overlapping to be determined yes well i'm about to use the bathroom in the haunted cowboy bathroom for the first time there's actually a shower in here okay so we'll see we're back in the saloon i'm getting ready to interview one of the locals here who has a lot of historical information about the paranormal activity that goes on here. It's like every room, including this bathroom that I'm in right now, has stories of ghost encounters and this shaman appearing to people and scaring them off and all kinds of weird historical stuff. So we'll see.